Edu, if that is you, um, thanks. Um, right. Mikel Marino. Here we go, guys. There we nominal. Um, we all knew this was coming. This has been coming. I've had, I've genuinely had romantic relationships uh, shorter than this saga. It's it's been incredible, but it's finally happening. The numbers being uh, put around at the moment. Let me just get them up. So this is from Ornstein. Uh, it's twenty-eight Your point. My mate, uh, he follows me now. Uh, twenty-eight point four million. Uh, on <laughs> I'll just DM him now on the stream. Oh, mate, what's happening? Uh, twenty-eight <laughs> million pounds and four point two million pounds in add-ons. I think that's a. I appreciate he's in the last year of his deal, but for the quality of player, I think that's a really good, a really good price. To be honest, um, I think he comes in. I, my take on this is that Marino has. I think I might have said this on this podcast before. I can't remember, but. I think Marino's been on the back burner basically the whole summer. And we've been looking at, okay, is Bruno happening? Is Eze doable? Is Desiree doing moving? What's happening with Adam Wharton, et cetera, et cetera, right? I think that's basically what's been going on. And we go, right, we can improve with Mikel Marino. So in the end, let's let's go and do that. If it feels like, you know, those things move, it looks like Eze isn't moving. Wharton's staying at Palace. Dewey's gone to PSG, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure there were other targets that we don't know about. And then we go, okay, well, we can go get Mikel Marino. It sounds like the conversations that were had with uh, Mikel happened, I think they said since 2023. So it sounds like they've been talking to him for, you know, and they will have been talking to him for a while. So it's not like we've made contact in the summer. I think he's been on the back burner. And that, that's my sense of the situation. Uh, before we come to sort of usage and so on, uh, yeah. thoughts on the deal and thoughts on that so far? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think I'm coming from a background of not knowing loads about the player and I still haven't done my due diligence because um, that, that's very poor from me, to be fair, very poor. I've had many weeks now as well. Um, okay. But I did say before the window started, you know, there are certain things that I wanted Arsenal to do. Um, and one of which was a 1v1 jeweler. And that is something that Mika Marino is. And you can look at the numbers, it completely supports that. In terms of the deal and the finances, I think it's a, uh, I'm very happy with it. You know, I think when we're talking about Smith Rowe going out and then Marino coming in, yes, it's not like for like replacement in terms of stylistically and the qualities that each has. But Arsenal don't view it that way. Arsenal have not viewed it in, in the way of which Smith Rowe has gone and we need to replace him because they've obviously looked at him and thought, well, Smith Rowe wasn't used last season or the year before, really. You know, so they've added a guy in midfield who is going to enhance certain things. And I think for the money, it's pretty fair. And I think when you consider, if we go, if we don't talk about the usage for a second and we look at simply the experience hole that we will have come 2025 in the summer with Jorginho likely to leave. Thomas Partey will be leaving as well uh, with his contract running out. I think both players' contract runs out actually next summer. We're going to need to sort of resolve that. And I think Marina mm -hmm. coming in, he has got a lot of experience in different countries playing in different styles. And I think that is something that's going to be really good. And I don't know if you saw, there was um, an article, I might link, I'll link it to you. Um, it was from Sky Sports where I think it was one of Mikel Marino's teammates, um, at one of his um, younger clubs uh, very early on in his career. And he said one of the things with Mikel Marino is his personality, his mentality, and he's like a sponge. And I think when you look at players that we have signed under Arteta, you need to be able to soak up a lot of information and you need to be able to take that on board and then demonstrate that on the pitch. And Mikel Marino, from what I have read, his personality completely fits what we like. Um, so that's something yeah. that really that's something that really attracts me because I'm very big on transferable qualities and I've kind of like spoken about this a lot, you know, where it's not just in terms of the skill set, but it's also how you are. Um and your mic is perfect. I don't know about mine, but I know my laptop. I know my laptop is absolutely dying. <laughs> <laughs> but um I think um, you know, transferable quality is not just about what a player can do, it's also how quickly they're able to adapt. And the way you're able to adapt quickly is, is by being able to understand the message that the manager has given you. And what's interesting as well is how Ray Sociedad play, um, how they set up nominally, you know, and how Arsenal set up nominally, and where <laughs> where Mikel Marino will be fitting in. It's a it's a nice life for life replacement. I think we're going to get something that we saw with Granite Jacker, maybe maybe not exactly the same that we can talk about, um, but. I think it's encouraging because I think he's going to fix a lot of things. And again, it's another tick on my list that I wanted Arsenal to address. Yep. Yeah, uh, I think you mentioned it there, the, co the coachability. Like, yeah. and it's something Mikel talks about a lot. He's, he's mentioned it with players. He always talks about it. And it's always interesting to me, the first thing he says, like when Calafiori sat down, uh, when he sat down with the interview about Calafiori, 
he said like you know i look in his eyes and all that sort of stuff and it's the whole i want to play for us i want to play for you i want to be part of the project i want to be involved it's not just this player this club want to sign me and yeah fine they're offering a good deal it's i want to play for us i want to play for Mikel Arteta. i want to come to this project i had other offers i want to come and do this and obviously that's important for every club ultimately every transfer that happens yes sure they pick you but there's a difference we know it with players excited to play for Mikel rather than just excited yeah. to move to the premier league there's like i'm excited to be in your system I think um, a, a big thing for me is it, 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 like almost like forgetting about the name and going, what have we added? What have we added through this transfer? We've added a player who is a plug and play player, plus one in the midfield already. So we're not worried about, you know, is he going to make an impact in terms of you know, he's one for the future? Does he need to, he's going to come in and he's going to contribute now. We've added size, which is important for a number of different reasons in terms of obviously the corners and set pieces and stuff, which could possibly go to a new level. By the way, I think we underperformed our XG on set pieces last season, which tells you that I, I think yeah. I could be wrong or someone will be able to tell me that there's some numbers suggesting that we can improve certainly on, on set pieces. Um, and also in terms of the physical demands on Declan Rice, they're reduced through through a Mikel Marino signing. We've yeah. signed someone who can receive in the pocket. We've signed someone who can rotate out wide in a way that I don't think Declan Rice can I don't think Kai Havertz likes to do as much on the left as he does on the right. Yeah. Uh, could have a discussion at some point, by the way, about the the impact of Havertz on Erdegaard and him drifting yeah. to the right. Erdegaard coming into the left hand side. I think it's a different conversation. Yeah. Um, we've added experience. We've added someone who um, I think will fit in culturally absolutely fine. In terms of also skills, I think we've added someone who can receive. We've added obviously. Uh, the sort of the, the uh, a natural left ear goes on the outside. Natural left ear goes on the left side. I don't necessarily think he can cross. Obviously, the yeah. jewels that can happen. Yeah, as I say, I think he could be first receiver, he could be second receiver. So you start to put together the skills list, and you go, okay. And all of that is you can okay, every, you could do that at Sunday League. He can do that all at the top level. There's things like his pace that I go. Mm. There's things like his stamina that I look at. I think physically, there's a little bit of a space for Marino to, to to maybe get up to the levels of the Premier League. I don't I don't think we'll see him go 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, yeah. 90 minutes, 90 minutes. I don't think that happens straight away. But when you start to sort of put a package together for the mm -hmm. price that we've done it, the, what's the impact of that on Martinelli? What's the impact of that on Declan Rice? What's the impact of that on managing Partey's minutes? What's the impact of that on managing Rice's minutes? What's the impact of all this on, you know, and you start to go, okay, it might not fit, be the most fancy player and the player that we all go, oh my goodness me, yes, get him on the back of the shirt as a 10. But in terms of raising our squad and fixing the holes that we had that you alluded to, this is a brilliant signing. It yeah, really and, and I think that that's where context is so important because I think when you just look at it in isolation, we're signing a, what, 28-year-old 28, 28 um, yeah, midfielder yeah. who's got one year left on his deal and we're spending upwards of 30 million and when you look at it from that perspective people could say we're, we're not okay we're not we're not yeah but 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 when you but that's what i'm saying you know when you look at things oh, in you're isolation saying... yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying i'm saying <laughs> yeah i'm saying when you look at things in isolation and you you look at it in fact that you're signing a player who's moving towards he's he's closer towards his latter stages than his early years right um and he's got one year left in his deal spending up with the 30 million people could argue is you know doesn't seem sensible funds but as you alluded to the holes that he fixes he's going to add a lot of value and it's very interesting when you look at how arsenal play and it's, it's interesting because I, I was looking at um some numbers behind um and again i'm trying to write this article and i've not got much uh i've not made a lot of progress talk to about it. it for about four years get on with it <laughs> but it's, it's it's the it's the way in which you know how we talk about I've, I've spoken many times about how i think arsenal need to do more in terms of short passing and playing through pressure as opposed to always going over the top and I think we can increase that. But I do think that it's very important to note that it is a key staple to our play going long. Mm. You know, and when you consider David Raya um, signing last year um, and you think of the Raya-Tony dynamic, we've kind of replaced that with the Raya Havertz dynamic. You look at Declan Rice, you look at Amica Marina, these are second ball dual winners. Mm. And I think when we go long, we've added another guy who has that intelligence and awareness to latch onto a second ball. But also when we go long, I think, and I spoke to you about it, Maybe people could argue it's more theory, but I do think it is very valid. And if you watch Arsenal this season, I want you to keep an eye, keep your eye on it. Is when we go long, if 
if we don't win the second ball, the likelihood of a player receiving from the opposition, he's going to be back to goal. You know, he's not going to therefore turn and play through pressure with an Arsenal guy on his back. So they're more likely to go back to the keeper or go back to the centre-back. And that allows us to then lock onto our press. And we know what Mikel Moreno is like in terms of his dual winning numbers and his ability in the press. Mm -hmm. And I think this is all the transferable qualities that he's going to add. The other thing, um, and it kind of goes... It links towards the Wolves game where, you know, we've spoken about the half space cross towards the back post and overloading. How many times have we seen that um, against Wolves? Yeah. And you look at Mika Marino, it's another yeah. target there. You've got high Havertz and Mika Marino, two six high, plus presence. High Havertz. Oh, I thought you weren't going to clock on there. <laughs> high Mary Havertz. To, Mary high to Havertz. Crossy and high Havertz. <laughs> but on, just on, on high, if you think about it from Raya's goal kicks... He's going, yeah. hi, mate. Um, <laughs> the two options could be Kai yeah. high pulling out to the to the right-hand side and Mikel and, pulling out to the left. Yeah, exactly. So where do you put your best dual winner? You don't yeah. know because he might he might go over that way or that way. And I don't think Ryan's particularly got... And also the off. beauty of this is that it then allows Erdegaard, again, more responsibility when he comes deep because when you're talking about those two number eights, you have Erdegaard. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when every time Ryan goes long, goes I have it. I feel I don't feel bad. I feel like any any like micro mistake you make, I pick up on it straight away. These are the, just these are the standards. I just, feel so, I just feel bad. I'm sorry. Oh no, you I'm know not me like though. I, life. It's just I have an I have an extremely high torrent server, but it's also I, I just <laughs> think you though, with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think you know when we talk about Erdegaard, and I think when you look at Erdegaard last season and his role change of becoming more of this all phase operator coming yeah. deep, knitting play together. That, again, it's tra it, it gives us a really good balance. But also, as you alluded to, the good thing with Mikel Marino is that he's very comfortable in build-up. He grew up as a number six, you know, so he's very confident in those areas. And I think when you talk about, you know, Granit Xhaka um, during the early stage of Arteta where he dropped into left centre-back and Saka, who was operating at left-back, would push really high. You again have got someone like Mika Marino who can do that as well in terms of dropping into the back line to help us in build-up. So he's going to add a lot of <laughs> oh, I can't believe that got picked up, and I think everyone picked up as well. Um, I was trying to say it really quickly. So, David Hire to to high. David Hire to to. <laughs> so stupid! It's so stupid. In terms uh, of the minutes, you think he'll get? Um, yeah. Because I have our, to say, our, our, yeah. No, I, the, the other thing that I really like about this, and I know this is very divided. Uh, amongst Arsenal fans. I've been tweeting about this recently and some people like it, some people don't. But I think Mikel Marino coming in and he's going to play a significant part. We know this. It forces Declan Rice more to be that number six. And for me, that is what I I've so. always wanted. I've always wanted this. You know, yeah. it's, not, I, it's I, not to say it's not to say that certain games I don't want Declan Rice as a number um, number eight. There absolutely are games which Declan Rice should be a number eight. But I do think long term in terms of where his minutes should be allocated predominantly, Declan Rice is that deeper midfielder for me. And that's what this signing definitely does as well. I think certainly long term. As, as long as, yeah, the, the first reception thing is always a question. As long as we platform him properly as a number six, I think it'd be, that's that's yeah. where he needs, he needs to go as a number six. If you're asking him to wriggle out of pressure all the time as a yeah. six in the Busquets way, that's not what he is. But he could also be a, br a brilliant six in a different yeah. way to a Busquets, right? Yeah. The... Um, yeah, I, I have a feeling this will be a just a case by case basis. I think Marino gets something like eighteen starts, something like that, something yeah. like that across the season. I think, it, it, but probably in runs of games. You know, we, yeah. we, we always do that. We have a run of games. Yeah. Things are going well. Mikel might change a couple of things. Keep yours in for a little while. We lose a game. We change it around a little bit. We or we we, we start. You know, we we go somewhere. We try something. You know, he brings Inchenko in, and we have that for five games. Then it changes again. It's it's going to work like that. So, um, yeah, I yeah. think eighteen to twenty. It's, hours. It. Yeah. it's not changing it every week. It's just about being like, okay, this is the right sort of run of games now. As I said, I don't think straight away, but I think towards the end of the season, he'll start getting to the team a little bit more. Um, yeah, I'm, one, I'm, I'm one, one, one of the key things, as as you mentioned, and we've we've said it many times. You know, the requirements of having a one v one dual winner and easing the burden that is placed on Declan Rice's shoulders yeah. is an absolute must. And this is what it does. This this signing definitely does that. You know, and um, I, I'm so happy with it because I think a lot of a lot of um, talk was Arsenal signing this kind of like creative, silky, you know, midfielder as as yeah. being the priority. It's a lot but of pressure me, on, on Rice. 
and, and for us, you know, it's always been this dual winner, you know, to, and, and the good thing is, is that when you actually look at, like I was watching a comp um, of his, him versus Real Madrid um, today, mm. and he's actually really, really like solid in terms of when he receives it in tight areas, he turns well and he releases really quickly. So and again, quick. it's a really small sample size, but it makes such a big difference, you know? So yep. yeah, I'm very yep. happy. Very happy. Uh, Fode or Fode, really appreciate your um, contribution. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm saying, sir, could be madam. You, you have got a tree, a palm tree in your picture. I'm assuming you're a very nice a... palm tree, but I'm assuming you're not a palm tree. 